You know, stuff like pacemakers or insulin pumps, stuff that's implanted into your body. They can be lifesavers for so many people, but they can also be hacked. In theory, okay, in theory, this means that, like, let's say a foreign spy could maybe hack the device of a CIA officer to transmit data from inside someplace secure where cell phones aren't allowed. Or criminals could threaten thousands of implanted medical devices and demand ransoms from victims. These are, again, in theory, connecting the dots down the road. But we had Ken Delaney and take a look at some of these concerns, talk to a cybersecurity consultant who managed to hack a pacemaker just like the one she has in her own heart. Watch. It sounds like something out of a spy drama, hacking into a medical device inside a human body with lethal results. Just such a scenario played out a decade ago in the Showtime series Homeland, when terrorists killed the fictional vice president with a massive shock delivered remotely through his pacemaker. Experts say it could happen in real life. It's possible to hack pacemakers. You could also hack other types of medical devices like insulin pumps, for instance. I mean, this could have bad consequences. Computer expert Marie Mo has more than a professional interest in the cybersecurity of medical devices. So about 10 years ago, my heart suddenly stopped. That's uh, why I needed a pacemaker. Essentially, I have a condition called heart block. The signaling inside the heart isn't working correctly, which can cause arrhythmias. Pacemakers and other devices connect wirelessly to base stations that can adjust their settings. Peter Pitts, a former Food and Drug Administration official, says that poses a risk. In my opinion, anything that's wired to the internet is susceptible right now to cyber break-ins, to healthcare terrorism. And shame on us if we wait until something happens that's deadly to solve the problem. We have to act on it, and right now. In 2020, Mo exposed vulnerabilities in medical device cybersecurity that were so serious, the federal government issued a warning. We actually were able to set up a fake base station in the lab that could connect to the device that is connecting to the pacemaker. You could, as an attacker, insert yourself into that communication and potentially change the messages that are going back and forth. After years of debate, the FDA recently issued draft guidance for cybersecurity in medical devices, but it's only voluntary. It's not enough to say that this is voluntary. I think it needs to be mandatory. If you didn't use seat belts in cars and then it was required and you had to do it, and now, I mean, everyone does it and it doesn't feel like it's a problem to use a seat belt. Mo and other experts consider assassination by medical device a remote possibility. But given how often hackers have blackmailed hospitals by freezing their computer networks with ransomware, they say it's a threat that should not be ignored. Ken Delanian is joining us now. You know, Ken, it is um, just extraordinary, I think, to watch and to listen to and to learn about. But we also have to, to point out, like, that in theory could be scary, a hack of a pacemaker. What in practicality, what in actuality is scary are ransomware attacks on hospitals, which are way, way more common, right? No, that's exactly right, Hallie. And in fact, those two things are related. Both medical devices and hospital IT systems are considered to be relatively easy targets for hackers because they often run outdated software full of security flaws. Some surveys have shown that 42% of hospitals have been hit by ransomware attacks in recent years. And cybersecurity experts I spoke to say it's probably higher. And these attacks don't just cost hospitals money, they put patients at risk. And in fact, back in 2019, a newborn's death in the middle of a ransomware attack in an Alabama hospital was attributed to fetal monitors being down. Yet there are no government rules setting minimum cybersecurity standards in hospitals, Hallie. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.